Hey guys, uh, this is Mike at Flatiron. Um, we recently realized we don't often post things about ourselves or the things we do behind the scenes. You know, we're not exactly social media people and we kind of just keep our head down and focus on operating the business a lot of times. But we actually do some pretty cool things behind the scenes and it's, we think it's about time we start sharing some of that with you. I'm currently in South America. I'm visiting some of our farming partners down here. We've been working on a new product for the past year or so that will feature different kinds of chili peppers that are native to South America, specifically the region and the foothills of the Andes. And these chili peppers are some of the tastiest we've ever had. We usually find a pretty high correlation between high levels of heat and high citrus flavors. And we really personally enjoy that high citrus flavor. So if you think about things like ghost pepper or scorpion that have a really great flavor profile, a lot of times they're so hot that you can't really enjoy that flavor because it's just burn in your mouth. And so in a lot of our current flavors, you can see that's why we're combining those hotter chilies with other chilies that have lower heat. So you can kind of still enjoy some of that flavor without burning out your taste buds. You know, we've been searching for chilies that have great citrus flavor profiles or retain that citrus flavor, but without having that extreme heat. And I think we finally found those. You know, some of these chilies have a Scoville heat rating of about 50 to 150,000, so they're about medium heat levels, but they still retain a really, really high level of citrus flavor. So, you know, we're super excited about sharing that with you. I'm currently on the rooftop of our hotel. I'm about to head out to the farms. I'm gonna spend the next couple days just doing some QA checks. The harvest is expected to be picked in the next week or two, so we're just down here making sure everything's in order, everything looks good. You know, we should be getting this back to Colorado, I'd say sometime in late October, and we'd, we'd be looking to release this sometime in mid to late November. So stay on the lookout for an email from us as soon as this thing's available. Um, hope you guys enjoy the sneak peek. And we just wanna say thank you guys so much for the support. Uh, we really appreciate all the kind words. And um, you know, please let us know if you need anything at all and hope you're all enjoying the summer. Take care. Now, some of you might be asking, what are you doing in South America? Well, this region of the world is really unique in that it sits along the equator with access to steep mountains and the ocean. This combo results in a year-round subtropical climate with high humidity and high elevation. Moisture condenses against the steep mountains and provides the region with a constant source of thick fog and rain, quickly followed by sunshine. To give you a better idea how quickly the weather changes out here, this is footage of a drive we had through the mountains to one of the farms we were visiting. This was a top 10 sketchiest drives for me, especially this part where the fog got so thick we could barely see the car in front of us. But you can see here how quickly the fog dissipates and all of a sudden you're in completely blue skies. Keep this weather pattern in mind as we're looking at the farms in a moment because this constant source of rainfall and sunshine allows for these farms to exist in the middle of the jungle without diverting a local river for irrigation like we do in the United States. It all starts here in these greenhouses. In order to ensure a high percentage yield for the crop and ensure the crop is all ripening at the same time, the plants are pre-seeded into these greenhouses and turned into these seedlings. Uh, here's some footage of a greenhouse growing scotch bonnet with seedlings that are just about ready to be transferred to the field. You can see how developed the root structure of this seedling is. This root structure is really going to help ensure the plant grows properly once it's planted into the field. As you arrive to most of these farms, you'll see crops like these cacao trees being grown on the outskirts of the property. Since these crops are continuously bearing fruit throughout the year, they help provide a steady stream of income for the farmers throughout the year in between larger harvests. The first farm we visited is growing a varietal called Sweetie Drops. These chili peppers are normally grown in the highlands of Peru and they have very low levels of heat, somewhere around 500 to 1000 Scoville heat units. Um, but they're able to retain a really high level of citrus flavor. Uh, we're not going to be featuring this chili pepper in this next product, but we're likely going to be featuring it in a new product soon. They are incredibly tasty, very, very low levels of heat. This farm had previously been growing some scotch bonnets. We actually found some growing alongside um, this farm. You know, these guys almost look like small tomatoes. And if you're familiar with our sweet heat flavor, the Scotch Bonnet is the star of that flavor. It's pretty spicy, about 150 to 250,000 Scoville heat units, but it has such a great citrus flavor. It's certainly one of our favorite chili peppers. Up next is a scorpion farm that we actually started picking this week. Now you might be looking at this 
pepper and saying to yourself, hey, that's not a scorpion. Well, let me tell you, this certainly passed the taste test. I felt every bit of the roughly 800,000 Scoville heat units of this guy. You know, this is a pretty cool shot to just kind of show you what happens in these fields. These are the same chili peppers, both are scorpion, but you can see one has the typical characteristics of a scorpion while the other doesn't quite have the same shape. Even the same plant, there can be variation in size and shape and color. So, you know, what the farmers do is they look for plants that have those characteristics they're looking for and they retain those plants to harvest their seeds. Those seeds then become the next harvest. So, you know, this process over time leads to a well-seasoned crop and also allows you to take advantage of some cool natural variation that happens within these fields. Now this good girl was recently bitten in the rear leg by a snake, which in hindsight, I should have taken as a warning and probably paid more attention to. As you'll see here in a moment, I was almost the most recent victim of the Bothraps Atrox, commonly known by locals as Ekes. This is a pit viper that hangs around agricultural areas and is very well camouflaged, as you can see here. Uh, this was a close call because the guy I was with was very even keeled. And so when he yelled out from behind me, Hey, you just stepped on a snake. Uh, I almost had a heart attack. Um, these guys are super poisonous and I was at least five hours away from a hospital, hospital. So, you know, bless my lucky stars. Anyways, back to the greenhouses. Those specimens from the field are brought back to these small greenhouses and grown into full plants specifically to harvest their seeds. It, they, they do these in this isolated greenhouse specifically to make sure that there isn't any cross-contamination happening from other chili variants uh, from the field. And just in case you weren't impressed by the previous snake, here's a monstrous spider to haunt your dreams. I think this was either a huntsman spider or some sort of tarantula, but either way, I did not sleep much this night. We also wanted to quickly show you this other chili pepper. It's called a Pekin. It has a medium heat level of about 50,000 Scoville, really nice citrus and vegetal flavor profile. We're not featuring this in the next blend, but um, I'd say within the next year, we're certainly gonna come out with a product with, with this. Super tasty chili pepper, really hard to harvest. You can see it's kind of these small berries. Now is a good time to show you how the chili peppers are processed after being plucked from the field. Essentially, the fresh chilies are moved through a water bath where other material from the field is cleaned off and any rocks or stones that might be mixed in there will sink to the bottom. The chilies are then sifted and moved along to these dehydration ovens. Depending on the kind of chili pepper that's being processed, they may be sliced before this dehydration step, and that's really just to ensure that the entirety of the chili pepper is kind of reduced down to a low water activity fairly evenly. You know, this is probably one of the secrets to our great flavor that our chili peppers retain. We try to dehydrate these chilies as soon as possible after harvest, and that really does help lock in that fresh flavor, and also just helps make sure that they're as clean as possible with, without any microbial growth. Now, finally, onto the good stuff. These are the next chili peppers we're going to be featuring on our newest product named Kimsa Keuni. That name, by the way, means three hot ones in the native tongue to the Inca Empire named Quechua. As you may have noticed from the previously shown Sweetie Drop and Pekin, many of these chili peppers native to this region are very small, almost like berries or small cherries, and these chili peppers are just the same. First up is the Cherapita, and it might be one of the tastiest chili peppers we've ever tried. Extremely high citrus flavor with a medium heat level of about 50,000 Scoville. This is one of the most expensive chili peppers in the world. Um, as you can see, they're, they're, they're kind of grown on these bushes and these small berries, which makes it very expensive to harvest, but the flavor profile is so great, you know, well worth the effort. Next up is the Weary Weary, a regional staple in South American cooking and resembles a small cherry. It has a medium to high heat level of about 200,000 Scoville, and it has a really nice, complex, and deep fruity flavor. It really adds a, a certain depth or richness to, to the blend. And finally, this is the ricotto, a native chili that grows along the foothills of the Andes and resembles a small apple. Slightly sweet in flavor with vegetal undertones. It has a medium heat level of about 50 to 100,000 Scoville heat units. Together, these three chili peppers combine to create a complex, deep, fruity flavor profile with a medium-high heat level of roughly 125,000 Scoville. Taste-wise, this might be one of our favorite flavors yet. Such a unique flavor profile that's gonna add a ton of flavor to your next dish. I hope you guys really enjoy this new flavor.